there trying to take new shots, trying to work on things, try and plan new plays, all that sort of stuff was pretty constant. He was there, ask again, asking for more practice time. Can we get in the gym earlier? Added. What a role he played in that game is he didn't see any action until overtime where he was called upon for a huge three. I'm very grateful to have found my passion. I feel like everybody has um, a skill um, that they, you know, once they find and tap into, you know, the sky's the limit for them. It's crazy, you know, as you get older, you find out that there's so many avenues within basketball and so many things you can learn from it and so many things it can do for you. Um, as a young kid, someone had told me once, you know, use basketball, don't let basketball use you. And I never really understood what that, what that meant. But now being on the other side of the fence, I 100% know and kind of resonate with exactly that statement. Um, Cause now I'm using basketball to help others and um, throughout everything that I'm doing now I hope that I can you know feel somebody else's passion and show them that just you know your typical average guy can you know find something and thrive in it the first 11 years of um, our life together as a family um, their father was in the picture as well so we had the four kids kids and um, we raised them um, till um, Jamil was 11 I would say and from that time on I have been uh, raising my boys till today I think my kids raised me um, as a parent um, you learn a lot by raising your kids they teach you all sort of stuff they teach you pa uh, patience tolerance love compassion and everything so I would say yes I was there to raise my children but I think they raised me and shaped me um, to become the person I am today so I've learned a lot of things um, during or raising my children yeah. we all have a gift and we just need to tap into it or to find it and Jamil's was sports he lives and eats and breathes sport. I remember one of his brothers <laughs> said, um, Jamil is the happiest person or will be the happiest person if he had just his ball and his dog. He doesn't need anything else in this life, you know. He never wanted to leave the damn gym. Basketball wasn't their life the same way it was for him, and I think at times he couldn't really believe that. Like he'd be there 20 minutes before I got there, you know, and then that was what we argued about. Really, it, you know, it wasn't a lot of strategy we argued, like, Jamil, like, get out of the damn gym. Basketball. That's a Miami Heat arena. So I look up to Jamil. There's certain characteristics um, that I, I say I definitely look up to. Like Jamil is somebody that definitely likes to see things through to its end. Um, so his drive and his passion is something that I can definitely say I, I watch and I pick up from in my own um, every day to day activities. Um, Jamil is very humble as well too and very genuine. So a lot of what he does, he does out of just like the genuine characteristics that he, he possesses. So I find I take a lot of that and try to embody that. Um, and he's also a mentor. So like me being a manager at Good Life Fitness and a few other places, I watch and see how Jamil has conversations with his kids and also how he motivates um, and even just practicing what he preaches um, in some regards. So I, I take some of that, apply it. Um, and it's always been something that has been like the environment within the household of never settling for anything but the best and really striving and not taking really excuses. So because of that environment in the house, I would say it's something that carries me through my every day to day activity, um, whether it just be even my own personal workouts or anything like that. It's just like trying to strive for 
whatever it is is the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. When he took it seriously, was I, th- I think that summer it's when uh, he uh, was coaching or he had uh, Merrick Palmer coaching him and it was just him going. There would be times where it was the summertime and that's usually when we relax. I'd be inside gaming or whatever, the occasional time we'd all go out and play or whatever, just be kids, right? But then there would be that time where it was actually training. You'd have pylons, there'd be, you know, drills going on. We never really did any of that growing up. It was like, okay, like I said, we had our, our practices. But that's when I think, I forget how old he was, but that was the time, that specific summer, when it was, okay, I'm focusing on this one specific thing. Like I said, we were naturally okay in a lot of the sports or whatever we were trying in. But there was that then laser focus, okay, I'm going to be training in basketball and that's what I'm going to be doing. So for him, it was those drills, it'd be hours on an end, and then there would be sometimes where I get on the bike and then I go down and I see him kind of training with Merrick or whatever, and then Merrick would leave or whatever, and he'd still be training. Uh, he'd have a basketball, he'd be shooting kind of in the air or whatever, working on form, stuff like that. So I'd say it was that specific summer when it was, okay, you know what, yeah, I play all sports, but this is when I'm going to play basketball. Mm-hmm. And as soon as basketball was the kind of focus, then it was, okay, you know, there's that plan A and there's that plan B. And then, you know, if you have plan B, it distracts from plan A, I'm just going to play basketball. And that's when it just kind of, just kind of. I've been on top for a while. Now it's not cheap to the moon. Fast car make going vroom, vroom. Take it to the boom. As hard as possible, didn't back down, and uh, he just uh, you know, certainly showed no fear. Mm-hmm. I'm sliding in the road, sliding in the lamb, sliding in the bean. Been working on my confidence and respect, I get a lot of it. And then he finally got subbed in, and he hit, I think, three back to back threes. And I lost my mind, you know, because I was like, what the heck, you know, why isn't he in? And I was on the sideline, I was shaking some signs, and I was like, I was like, so, so, kind of happy and sad at the same time. So that was one of the most memorable moments I had, seeing the product, you know, of all the hard work finally come to fruition, but in a, in a, like a difficult situation. So that was one of the moments that kind of stuck out in my mind. Cheaper to the moon, fast car make going room room. I'm a visionary, I got the niggas scared. Mm. Bought a big paddock with a brand new wrist setting. Mm. I was able to go to Lebanon and start my pro career. Going to Lebanon now as a professional basketball player, again, a new environment, a new place, and again, new struggles. My- I'd be lying if I said that I never went through any struggles because um, I think in order for you to succeed, uh, to get better, and to move on, uh, you know, you're going to go through a lot of struggles and failures and, uh, you know, be, have your back against the wall. Part of me wanted to quit basketball, uh, cold cut. Um, me, and our, me and the coach never really saw eye to eye for a few reasons. Um, I, I struggled with that. I didn't know who to speak to. I uh, didn't know what to do. And I'm somebody that doesn't really quit when he gets into something, especially basketball. Going into my senior year at university, I felt like I was now in a place where I belonged, right? I put in the time, I put in the work, I've, I've showed not just the coaches, but my teammates and everybody else around that I belong here. And it was almost the same thing again. So I kind of dealt with this thing throughout my university career of not being able to fulfill what I thought could have been a good university career, right? I mean, everybody kind of starts off slow uh, just because it's a, you know, a new environment, a new level of basketball. Regardless of everything that took place in my university career, still make it to becoming a professional basketball player. You know, I'm super excited, signed my first contract, I head to Lebanon, and uh, I initially was going there as an import. They initially thought that I had my citizenship, my papers, to say that I was Lebanese, even though I don't. So when I got there, everything was going smoothly, I was playing, I was doing very, very well when I got there, Um, and season was starting to come, so we had to start the whole signing process and registration of players. 
And it's not until then that the club that I was playing for realized that I actually didn't have my papers. When my dad immigrated here to Canada, um, he didn't go back to Lebanon again. He never registered my brothers and I as, uh, I guess, you, you know, citizens back in Lebanon. So it's something that I had to do on my own or come back to Canada because the team had already signed the maximum number of imports. So here we go, another struggle, another situation where I'm like, am I ever going to catch a break? You know, I just want to play basketball and just do what I love to, to the best of my abilities. So uh, my first year there, um, three months in, I had to now sit. I was able to obviously practice, go to all the games, travel with the teams, but I wasn't able to play anymore. I wasn't able to play until my papers had cleared. Um, it's not until almost about the playoffs and I've been sitting for about five months not playing. Um, when I finally got my papers, but by that time, the team had kind of already gelled. The coaches were content with what was going on. I had to kind of find my way back into the rotation when initially I was a starter when I almost got there. Later on uh, in 2018, I started my own basketball training company and uh, it's taken off since then. Um, I've had the opportunity to uh, work with uh, NBA coaches, some NBA players, um, NBA scouts. I've also been able to travel the world, which has been an awesome, actually the most gratifying thing and the most fun thing so far has been able to travel the world um, and, and teach kids not just about basketball, but just life in general. Um, I've been able to travel to Africa the last three years. Um, I've been to Gabon, Chad, and uh, Senegal, which is pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, every time I go on these these uh, trips, I always try to, to learn something that I can bring back here to instill within my business, but also give back to the kids so they can also learn, but also have a head start and hopefully, you know, learn things that they can use to propel them and move ahead quicker in their, uh, you know, basketball endeavors on and off the court. Under Armour now has been an amazing, amazing help with all my programs. Um, my basketball organization that I started now, they uh, pretty much give us all the gear from head to toe with uh, team jerseys, our backpacks, shoes, hoodies, uh, our track suits, everything there. Uh, my basketball camps that I run throughout the summers, uh, they've been able to give us prizes, um, any giveaways that I do, uh, they've been heavily involved and because of them they've also helped push my company um, up another level, right? I mean, to have that partnership with a brand that's so big um, speaks volumes, so I'm very, very uh, grateful for everything that they've done over the last two years for me and I look forward to continuing, you know, working with this brand. A lot of kids uh, tend to put their heads down as soon as they run into a roadblock or uh, fail. And I think as coaches and mentors, we need to let these kids know that they should keep their head up no matter what happens. Um, part of the journey is failing and you need to learn how to get yourself back up because I think all those things along the way make you who you are, they make you stronger, they make you uh, persevere but they also show you that you can fight through all these things. So the biggest thing I would say is keep your head up and don't give up. Uh, realize that it's going to take time and it's not a race.